Hello and welcome back to First Look Asia. At 8,167 meters, Dalagiri or the White Mountain is the seventh highest mountain on the planet. As one of only a handful of peaks in excess of 8,000 meters, it has challenged many climbers throughout the years, including our next guest. Just three weeks ago, uh, Darren Doshi became the first Singaporean to summit this mountain. And he joins us today to share with us his exciting journey. Welcome to the show, Darren. Thank Welcome you. Welcome back down to Earth. <laughs> <laughs> now you're... I like the oxygen <laughs> levels here. Yeah. Yes. It's much nicer, isn't it? <laughs> now, you're the first Singaporean to summit that mountain. Congratulations. I Thank mean, you. It's about two and a half weeks right since you got back absolutely yeah. how are you feeling i know you like the air down here but how are you <laughs> feeling really um well primarily revitalized would be the word i'd use um and maybe that connects back to why i do these things um you know, what shocks most people is my motivator my driver for doing these things is actually fear right fear of um complacency fear of stagnation and fear of routine so you know for me uh, each of us has got that much time on the planet. Yeah. Uh, we, we have choices of uh, what we spend that time on. And, um, you know, I just like to challenge myself to put myself in uh, unfamiliar territory and then to see, you know, sort of push the boundaries and then discover a little bit about myself. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of why I go. And each time I come back hoping... Uh, to feel revitalized and then ready for action, and that's exactly how I feel right now. But wow. but to go for the seventh highest mountain, the one that's technically more difficult uh, than Everest. Like Geary, than Everest, some yeah. people say. Yeah. Why did you pick that one? Yeah. So uh, funnily enough, when I was a kid, uh, my dream was to climb Everest, like I assume many kids uh, would have. Um, you know, that's sort of a dream, and um, I, I tried to uh, in 2009, 2010, but uh, due to you know scheduling conflicts. Uh, the unfortunate incidents, the avalanche and the mm. uh, earthquake that happened in Everest, uh, it just became extremely challenging to, you know, get myself onto an expedition. Mm. And uh, with the backlog and then the various things uh, of climbers waiting to climb Everest, uh, I, when when this presented uh, itself to me, Dolagiri, mm. to be honest, I did not know very much about Dolagiri either, right? Um, and, and then when this came out, I learned it was one of the lesser climbed 8,000ers. Uh, which meant generally that it's less commercialized. There's very few people on the mountain, which is kind of what I like. I get into, I, I do these things because I like nature. Mm. I like getting out where I can actually listen to myself think, right? So it's just your own time, your own space, and then you're going to, you know, put yourself at a bit of risk, no doubt. But uh, that kind of also brings alive your senses. And, you know, so for me, it's just that. So the luxury, when, when this was presented, uh, somebody also said, oh, you know, you might help bring the Singapore flag up. And then, then I found out that, you know, no Singaporeans had done it. And you so did. That, <laughs> that, of course, oh, became no. a nice uh, opportunity where I could use yeah. the expedition to possibly, you know, do Singapore proud. And then I'm glad I, I succeeded. Oh, you yeah. sure have. <laughs> I, I like how he just says, oh, you know, it's just one of those 8,000ers. Like, yeah, just climb 7,000, 5,000, no mean feet. How long did you take to scale um, Mount Dolagiri? So we, from the day we started the expedition, 35 days, uh, so the morning of 22nd May was when we summited. So mm -hmm. 35 days to the summit and 38 days to get back to base camp. So basically 38 days on the mountain. Okay, when you're at the very top, yeah. you've uh, unfurled the Singapore flag. Look what was that. going through your mind? What did you feel? A, a huge, obviously, sense of achievement, but privately, what that. were you saying to yourself? Yeah, so for sure I was rejoicing, right? Yeah. I mean, it, there was this sense of achievement. But at the same time, I, I must admit, there was a bit of a void, mm -hmm. right? So I think for many of us who, who, who are constantly seeking for, you know, what next... Yeah. You know, so for the last few months, it's been Dola Giri and then, you know, and making that happen and the training and the prep and the logistics uh, and, of course, the climb itself. But when you got when I got up there, I realized, well, OK, so that's done. Of course, I had to get back down. Right. Which is, uh, yeah. you know, I was just at halfway. I, I still had to get back down to the base camp. Uh, but it was more already thinking about what next. Right, what would be my next adventure? And it doesn't have to be mountaineering. It could be anything. Right. Right? I, think, uh, I think, again, I, I prescribe to the philosophy that you kind of need to um, you know, expose yourself to different elements. So I'm, I, I don't profess to be a mountaineer. I'm not. Yeah. I'm just a regular guy next door who chose to... You're an you know, adrenaline junkie. A... <laughs> true and true. Maybe, yeah, a little yeah. bit. So, so it was primarily that. So the rejoicing, yes. Uh, the the awareness that I still had to get down safely because yeah. most accidents actually happen on the way down. Yeah. Uh, but also that void where which I still haven't filled. Mm -hmm. So if you have any suggestions oh, about right. what to oh, do next, I don't we'll think anything I can suggest yeah, will we'll be able to top what you've done, my friend. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. For the but, next few weeks, it'd probably be uh, oh, you know for for immediate future, it'd be family and friends. It's yeah. nice to be back in Singapore, and uh, of course uh, tying uh, to the other thing 
uh, this expedition was pledged to, which is uh, charity. Yeah, tell us right? more about that. Yeah, so, uh, you know, for the past few years, uh, everything I do, any endeavours like this, I, I, I like to, you know, pledge it uh, to a, a specific cause or charity. And I think, I think many of us uh, have the capacity and the willingness to give back, but uh, sometimes we just... Uh, we're just not sure if that particular cause is it or we're cynical about where the money really goes. Mm. Uh, so for this particular expedition, I, I've pledged it to, uh, you know, Children and Youth First, CYF Nepal, which is an organization that I've researched. I've met the founder and, uh, you know, I, I, I really, I sincerely believe that they're doing good work. Mm. So it's basically, you know, what's changed many lives. Some of us are fortunate, right? We kind of get uh, through life, uh, the, the basics quite easy. But I think many people don't have the fundamentals. And um, so this expedition, I pledged to the gift of education. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to fund 42 children uh -huh. uh, through uh, primary school, right? So CYF is the organization I'm working with uh, to put these 42 kids through six years of primary education. That's, that's yeah. amazing. You know, I'm yeah. just wondering, there are a lot of people watching, a lot of young kids who are watching mm. in Singapore, around the region, here in Asia. Mm -hmm. It, it seems like what you've done, you, you seem like an ordinary, guy, yeah, regular guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, a very ordinary guy. guy. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. what do you want to tell them as well? Um, well, you know, I think one is uh, just, you know, recognize that we all have time. Yeah. Uh, you know, we all have certain time and that's within our control. Uh, we have choices, right? So many people tend to either, you know, uh, say, oh, that's just how it is. I have no time. I'm busy with work and family and so on. But I think often, you know, just reflecting on the so-called perception of constraints on yourself, uh, you know, just if you if you look a bit deeper and if you try a bit harder, I think many of us can actually break out to do bigger, better things. So I'd encourage, you know, anyone watching, kids, mm -hmm. actually of any age. Yeah. We had a climber who celebrated her 60th birthday on this expedition. Oh and my. she summited, right? So, wow. so honestly, it's not about age. It's not about physical fitness per se. Right. I think you just have to choose and it could be anything. It doesn't have to be mountains, could be performing arts, could be, you know, whatever excites you, could be cooking, right? But just uh, just setting yourself a goal and kind of, you know, seeing how far you can go. It obviously takes a lot of mental strength to, you know, summit a mountain like that. Uh, what other tips do you have for people who might want to embark on, a, on an expedition such as yours? Wow. Okay. Uh, so first of, first and foremost would be safety, yeah. right? Um, if, if you do choose to do something that's uh, risky, that, that involves potentially, uh, you know, uh, life and death situations, I think uh, you have to be consciously aware about safety and then take necessary precautions uh, in my case, I was very fortunate. The agency I went with, mm. uh, Adventure Consultants from New Zealand, they're really, you know, um, probably the topmost uh, in, in their field. And, uh, you know, just the, the level of confidence and comfort, you know, the expedition leaders, the logistics, the prep, the spare equipment, the Sherpas, everything just kind of set it up. So I think my first advice would be, you know, uh, watch out for safety, do your due diligence. But second would also be, you know, test yourself, push yourself, uh, you know, uh, give yourself a challenge and not just something that you always do already, right? Yeah. So I think it's always nice to try something different, yeah. just like I did as a non-mountaineer, uh, a mountaineering expedition. Oh, man. Yeah. You're, you're too like you humble. You were a mountaineer and you went to do this. That's amazing. <laughs> well done. Congratulations. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Good talking Cheers. to you, Darren. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. And we've been speaking with Darren Doshi, the first Singaporean to submit uh, on the Dolagiri, the world's seventh highest mountain. If you want to lend a helping hand to Darren and the organization he's supporting, head on to the website on your screen right now. Well, on that note, we are done for today, Monday, 12th of June. Join us again tomorrow when we look at how to keep children and youth safe online and hear a teenager's firsthand experience of cyberbullying. Plus, we're going to meet a piano prodigy who started playing at the age of five. Tao Chen Wei is sweeping the competition. Well, have a great day ahead of you. Stay tuned to uh, Channel News Asia. Asia Business First is coming up with Adam Bhaktia. That's in about uh, four minutes from now. Have Till a then. great Monday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.